Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Six in Toronto. I, I'm sorry, I mean, welcome to the Lewis Sports Network. It is your boy Lewis, and I'm back once again with another heavy hit of banger with yet another video. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, make sure you share the content, make sure you sh um, hit the notification bell, and make sure to comment down below. I am talking about the Toronto Raptors. So, the Raptors are very good, and they've maintained their principles from last year, and they've actually proved a lot of people wrong. I don't think a lot of people really saw the Raptors be this good. I knew that they would be, well, let me be honest. I originally said that the Raptors were not going to, they were going to be okay. I was a little bit uh, crazy when I said that, um, you know, they wouldn't even be a playoff team, but it was like, I realized that in the bottom part of the East, there are a lot of bad teams. So I said that they would be in the playoffs. Uh, but I didn't think that they would be one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference. I saw them kind of like as a maybe anywhere from like a four to a six seed. You know, but they exceeded expectations. And I got to give Pascal Siakam a lot of credit. He stepped up. You know, he's become, you know, he became an all-star this year. I mean, he's the, mo the reigning most improved player from last year. He's averaging, what, damn near 24 points a game. So I got to give him credit. Uh, the Raptors have maintained their principles. Uh, so my concern with the Raptors are injuries. Uh, so they've had guys in and out of the lineup. They've had Kyle Lowry, they've had Serge Ibaka, they've had Norman Powell, Fred Van Vliet, Marcus Saul. You know, he's been out as well. So they've had to had a little bit of different lineups. Uh, also, my concern with the Raptors is how they do against the top teams uh, in the NBA. Um, so teams with uh, above 500 records, so 500 or above. And even more concerning, they're not that good again. They have not, I don't think, they. I think they've struggled against the top uh the top teams in the East, I believe they struggled against the Heat, the Celtics, and the Bucks. I don't think they've beaten the Bucks yet at all, neither. So, um, which is a cause for concern. That's awesome. that's it. And also, my concern also is with, because they're deep, they're talented, but my issue with them is uh, Nick Nurse has done a very good job, and he should be in the running for coach of the year, so i got to give him credit, even without Kawhi Leonard. But to me, that's where they're going to miss Kawhi Leonard because even though they're not that far different, again, Kawhi Leonard gave you that belief that they were a championship team because they have a legitimate closer, a guy who could take over the game and a guy who's not afraid to take big shots. The question for this Toronto Raptors team is who's going to be that guy in the fourth quarter to take over when they need to go, a go-to guy to go get a big basket or big baskets. And when I look at this Toronto team, they're a submission of the parts. So they have to pretty much do it collectively. And I think against the top, against the better teams like the Bucks and the Celtics, and then you're talking about the Miami Heat, I feel like that's what the Raptors are going to struggle. Now, Miami, you're like, well, they're not really that much different because Jimmy Butler's not really like a dominant, dominant player. No, he's not, but he can play big in the fourth quarter. He can hit big shots in the fourth quarter. That's something that the Raptors really don't have. They don't have that. I mean, you can make that case even for the Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, Giannis is their go-to player, but then it's like when, but the issue with him is he can't really hit jump shots consistently to where it's like, now you really have to be careful. Um, but with the Raptors, it's like, I don't know. See, the matchups are going to have to favor Toronto in order for them to go back to the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, I give them a lot of credit. So, Drake... Yes, you better sing it right now. I'm upset mm, that the Toronto Raptors can't win the chip. So then I ask you also, ladies and gentlemen, that remember how Kyle Lowry played when Kawhi Leonard was next to him as compared to, you know, DeMar DeRozan. So now you don't have that security blanket in Kawhi Leonard. So now how is Kyle Lowry going to play in the postseason? And he's always been feast of famine. There's games where Kyle Lowry can play big, and then there's other games where Kyle Lowry disappears. So... And I'm wondering how Pascal Siakam is now going to feel the pressure as the guy now on the Toronto Raptors, um, where they don't have Kawhi Leonard. And it's because I mentioned last year, if you look at that series against Philadelphia, there were many times, especially when the games were close, Siakam looked very scared of the moment. And you can see it in some of the other Raptors. I know Van Vliet was going through things with, um, he was about to have a child. Um, but like I said, I just don't know about the Toronto Raptors. But, but hey, uh, who knows? Things might fall in their favor. Um, but we'll see what happens. But I don't know if Toronto's going to go far. But I give them a lot of credit with the way they've done this season, though. So 
What do you think that the Raptors need in order for them for the, to try to go all the way back to the finals for a second straight title? We'll see. So, uh, Drizzy, I have to make another song, buddy. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy Lewis with another one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, as always. Live, laugh, love. Thank y'all for watching.